Right. Well, welcome to uh, an update more than an episode today here, um, where we we just got word from the bishops of Ohio, so just kind of talking about that a little bit. And so let's start with our prayer real quick. In the name of the Father, and of the, the Son, Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We and entrust ourselves to you, health, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, you know what we need, and we are confident that you will provide for us as a Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the divine physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are attending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross, to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Under thy protection we seek refuge, O Mother, Holy Mother of God, in our needs despise not our petitions, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. So as you know, yesterday, um, April 28th, hey. um, the Catholic Conference, um, they met, the bishops last week met on Friday, and uh, they came out yesterday with their um, indications. The letter is posted on Facebook as well, and um, but the, the the skinny of it, the, the long and short of it, is that the bishops of Ohio have extended the temporary suspension of all publicly celebrated masses and litur and liturgies, um, ending on May 29th, with the hope of publicly celebrating together the solemnity of Pentecost on the weekend of May 30th, 31st. Each of the bishops of Ohio once again dispensed the Catholic faithful who reside in their respective dioceses and all other Catholics currently in their territories from the obligation of attending Sunday Mass during this time. We ask for the cooperation and adherence of all faithful to the governor's directives during this period. The, the, um, it, the letter con continues on and says we are working diligently with our pastoral teams to consider reasonable, gradual, and responsible initiatives for welcoming back the faithful in times in time for, to Sunday Mass, initiatives which will renew our love for the Eucharist and the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and which will help us to restore Catholic life and invite us to share that life after the pandemic, etc., etc. So, just to update you of what we're doing here at this parish, uh, Mary Help of Christians, and uh, obviously our cluster, we have always um, had our churches open um, for people to go in and visit. Uh, we followed the initiative of the Holy Father and in, and in Italy where they also opened their churches. I know some churches aren't able to do this, so don't feel bad that some churches are not allowed to or can't do this. It's not practical or safe for them to do this, so it would be right for us to criticize uh, what they can do. We are in a different situation. We feel that we can do this in a very safe and, and an orderly manner, and as long as we notice that everyone is still maintaining norms, um, uh, social distancing and and things like this um, we will continue we're thinking of different ways of offering a, the sacrament of confession um, some have mentioned that they can possibly hear confessions um, hear the confession of others because they're speaking too loudly so we're trying to resolve that issue the right now as it stands we have um, a confession set up Confessional set up in the entrance in that big glass cubicle there at Mary Helper Christians. And we have another confessional inside the church. And then the, and so that we're in more open space, so that we're not, there's no vent, well there is a, there is a vent in the, in the confessionals, but there is no way of getting fresh air from the outside uh, through a window in the confessional. So we'll update you if we we might rearrange, especially where that second confessional, confessional is. Might be. Um, so we'll we'll let you know if we do. Uh, calling all carpenters, I suppose. Um, we'll think what we can do. Um, 
with that. If you have any initiative, call me up. Um, call my number. Call the office. The but we were going to have confessions. Uh, we had more confessions available before because there was uh, e it was Easter, and it was preparation for Easter and also Divine Mercy Sunday. So we had extra extra times of confession. Um, once again, we are having going back to basically the normal times of Saturday at three o'clock. Uh, now it's going to be at three o'clock, three to four fifteen, as well as um, confessions at eight thirty on Sunday mornings, eight to eight eight forty. Eight, sorry, 8.30. I don't know if we want to open it up at the 8 o'clock. Sure. He said, sure. So, 8 o'clock Sunday morning to 9.15. Okay. We will have confessions at Mary Helper Christians. Um, but for, everybody showing up at 9 o'clock yeah, don't can make it tough. So, right. do so, try to spread out throughout that hour because we have a tendency on Sunday mornings, I think. We all to, like to sleep in. I know yeah. I do. Um, so, just to let you know, usually there's no one there when we first start. So the earlier you come, usually the better, um, the faster your line is. You could always call. You don't have to identify yourself. You just say, I would like to go to confession, and then we would, we would just uh, set a time, and we'd meet you in the confessional. So you could always do that, um, obviously. Just confirm it with the secretaries. The streaming times, so there's... We're gonna we we've moved the mass to eight o'clock in the morning, um, for the morning masses instead of being at seven fifteen. So those are the streaming times. Eight a.m. Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays. Seven a.m. or seven p.m. on Tuesdays, and twelve noon on Wednesdays for the streaming masses. This Friday is May first. Okay. A significant day it begins at month of May. Um, I suggest that you, as uh, accordance with what the Holy Father said, promoting the rosary. We should be, hopefully, you're all praying the rosary every day as a family, at least a decade every day. If you have small children, uh, it's, it's a beautiful prayer, but it's a very powerful prayer. It's probably the second, third most powerful prayer in the church outside of the Catholic Mass. So, um, this, this May 1st, the is he Cardinal? Colonel uh, Gomez, uh, I believe it is, or is he just Bishop, of uh, San Francisco, no, of, oh, sorry, of Los Angeles, um, is consecrating the country, the United States of America, to, um, to Mary, re-consecrating, it's already been consecrated, but we're going to re-consecrate her and ask her for the, the grace to end this epidemic, and this pandemic um, that we have, <clears throat> so that will be posted on our website as well. Uh, those times we're going to post something we're going to do something ourselves um, for that event basically it'll be a live stream again unfortunately uh, we'll try to do more so we'll let you know when that is right on, on Facebook or something on Facebook and, and on our website when mass is resumed we have to come up with a, with a way of, of doing this um, right now the, the masses are supposed to resume on Pentecost. So at the end of May. At the end of May. Um, was it May 31st? I believe so. Yeah. So May 30th, 31st. So when Masses begin again, that doesn't mean everything goes back to normal. It means we still have a lot of restrictions in terms of, especially with social distancing. Right. So it becomes a question of how do we, how do we bring people into the Masses, but we don't have as much room, for example, to fit as many people um, as we usually would. So how are we going to organize that? That's something we're still kind of trying to figure out right. how we're going to go about doing that. So we as priests, you know, they only want us to really to celebrate one Mass a day. Um, but you can do by exception two, and what we've been doing on a regular basis here has been three. So we'll probably have to extend the number of Masses. The problem is everybody wants to go to the same Mass, right? So, and to the same place. So I'll have to figure that out. If you have any suggestions, remember we have to keep the criteria and the principles of our faith, you know. So this is the problem. Um, with the social distancing, it makes it very difficult to, to um, respect these things. Um, so, 
this is what we're working with. Um, how to be safe and how to do this in, the, in a fair manner. Um, there's nothing that upsets people more than trying to be fair. Because <laughs> everyone was thinking something is not fair. Um, so if we have to restrict how many people go to the mass, this is where the arguments are going to come in um, and the problems are going to come in. Thanks be to God for uh, that we do at least have live streaming. It's not the best, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It's frustrating for ourselves, it's difficult um, for ourselves as well. But I'm sure it's even more difficult for you for it's, it is what it is, right? So, but through the generous donations of, of at least 30 donors, we're just a few hundred dollars short at this point. Um, we've, we're able to get live streaming, as you know, and we've also expanded the live streaming to, to now live stream into the, what we call the library. The live stream also is going to be extended to the Undercroft, which might be very helpful during this time of getting more people in church. Once again, it will not be perfect. But at least more people could, if they want to, go to the Undercroft and be socially distanced down there. And that's an immediate live stream. We've made it so that there's an immediate passing from the sound and the video to those places. It costs some money to do that, but I thought it was worth it. Um, and it'll, it'll be, it'll be um, helpful. So those things, so through the generous donations of these, these generous uh, parishioners, and also the Knights, I have to mention the Knights of Columbus. The Knights of Columbus uh, have received a donation, which they were, they're going to give to us so that we can pay for the, the um, fee of continuing live streaming every month. So they've decided uh, for the moment that they're going to offer uh, paying that fee for us every month so that we can continue to live stream. Um, even after this pandemic. Once we get returned, you know, we're still going to have some restrictions, as you, as you know. They're not going to just let us fill the church like we did before. Once again, if you have some good ideas, uh, don't feel offended if I strike down your ideas. Some ideas are not very good. Um, some of my ideas are not very good. But we have to follow certain church criteria. We can't just do willy-nilly, you know, any old invention um, out there. So, so we'll keep uh, thinking about how we might organize this. Obviously there's probably going to be more details coming out, directives from the bishop maybe that kind of influence what we end up doing, um, but we're going to keep trying to find a good way of, of bringing as many people as possible to the Mass after this time. Um, and again, if you have ideas on how that might be done, feel free to throw them out there without the full expectation that we're going to follow every idea we get, obviously. Right. Um, it's just the more the more ideas get thrown out there, the more we have to kind of think about and to consider, okay, well, this might be an option or that might be an option. Um, so that could be helpful as well. Um, and that goes for the other sacraments as well. So, so once again, try to keep your spirits up. School's going to be out in a few months, or in a less than a month as well. So you won't have to have that burden on you, mothers and fathers. Um, and you can let your children out into the yards and uh, get out and get some sunshine and things like this. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being our parishioners.